The boost to Marseille was huge. For years, organised crime, corruption and drug trafficking have built the city a diabolical reputation with the rest of France. But at last here was a chance for them to hold their heads up and be applauded by their usually snooty countrymen. When three days later Marseille added another French championship to their honours, it truly seemed that supreme success was theirs. However, in the next few days, it was all to turn very sour. On May the 20th, Marseille had played a game against the relegation-bound club Valenciennes, and naturally enough, they'd won. However, allegations quickly arose that in order to guarantee themselves an easy run-up to their European Cup final, Marseille had paid three of the Valenciennes squad £25,000. Bribery, match-fixing and doping. The allegations which would end Bernard Tapie's ownership of Olympic Marseille and bankrupt the club at their peak. In 1986, French businessman Bernard Tapie took over Olympique Marseille with the intention of bringing the European Cup to French soil for the first time. Seven years later, his side were in firm position to claim their fifth consecutive Ligue 1 title and were on the precipice of making history ahead of the newly formed Champions League in the final against Italian heavyweights AC Milan. Having lost the 1991 final to Red Star Belgrade, the French side were determined to avoid repeating their previous failure. Marseille had made impressive additions to the side which had fallen short in 1991 adding Fabien Barthez, Marcel Desailly and Rudy Voller to an already impressive side which included Abedi Pelé and Didier Deschamps. As far as the final itself went, it was far from memorable. With 42 minutes on the clock, Basile Bolli nodded Les Olympiens into the lead, a lead which they held until the final whistle, seeing off Milan 1-0. However, while the French side celebrated on the pitch in Munich, behind the scenes there was something brewing which would shock the footballing world. A week after their victory in Germany, news reports began surfacing that Bernard Tapie had resorted to bribery in order to ensure his side's domestic success. This prompted an inquest into Marseille's previous successes and created a rising sense of doubt over the team's many victories. In April 1993, Bernard Tapie's ownership of Olympic Marseille was a success by all determining factors. He had delivered four straight domestic titles and was on the verge of providing the fifth. In addition to this, his Marseille side had been to the European Cup final two years prior and had booked their spot in the final once again. So as the season came to an end, life for fans of the French club was pretty good. By the time the third last game week came around, they were leading the league and could all but secure the title with a win against relegation fodder Valenciennes before heading to contest the Champions League final the following week. The trip to Valenciennes threw up no surprises as Marseille emerged 1-0 winners against a lacklustre, uninspired opposition, giving them one hand on the title and allowing them to focus on their upcoming final. A final which they won, making them the first French team to lift the European Cup, a historic achievement and one which marked Tapie's greatest achievement as owner of Marseille. But just one week after the final, reality would come crashing down on Marseille, as Valenciennes player Christophe Robert stepped forward and admitted to accepting a bribe from the European champions. It was then that the public were made aware that while Marseille were crowning themselves champions of Europe, they were simultaneously being investigated for match-fixing and bribery. Jean-Marie Vigniel, who refereed the match against Valenciennes, had noted the unusual nature of the game in his post-match report. In particular, he noted the fact that Valenciennes player Jacques Glassman spent the match running hard, like he had something to prove, while his teammate Jorge Borrachaga wasn't complaining about refereeing decisions as he normally would. As time went on, more and more evidence came to light, and what had happened became clear, and at the centre of it all was Bernard Tapie. Having watched his team lose the European Cup final two years previously, Tapie was determined that his side would not suffer the same misfortune this time around. The last thing he wanted was his team exhausting themselves against a side which was practically already relegated, with the biggest game of their lives coming in a week, so he took the necessary steps to ensure that this would not be the case. To do this, he used Marseille player Jean-Jacques Aydely, who had previously played with a few of the Valenciennes players, asking him to make sure that the Valenciennes players would take it easy because he didn't want them acting like idiots and breaking us before the final with Milan. That day, Aydely and Marseille director Jean-Pierre Bernays got into contact with Valenciennes captain Christophe Robert and his teammates Jacques Glassman and Jorge Borrachaga. Glassman immediately refused to participate, but Robert and Borrachaga accepted the bribe and Robert convinced the team to lose on the day of the game. It was at half-time during that 1-0 victory that the scandal first surfaced. Upon entering the changing room at the half, Glassman made coach Boro Primorac aware of the bribe, and during the second half he informed referee Vigniel of the bribery offer, which was mentioned to his linesman and Marseille captain Didier Deschamps, as well as noting it in his post-match report. Immediately after the game, the investigation began, with policemen entering the Marseille dressing room to question some of the players. Just six days later, Marseille would become the first French team to lift the Champions League, but there was a storm brewing. Behind the scenes, the police investigation was building ahead of steam, and just a week after the final, Christophe Robert got cold feet, contacted a Valenciennes magistrate, 
and admitted to accepting a bribe. When police raided Robert's aunt's home, they found a sum of 250,000 francs, which would be around 40,000 euro today. Bernard Tapie initially tried to claim the money was a loan for Robert to start a restaurant, but Robert quickly made it clear that it was related to the bribe. Marseille's headquarters were promptly raided by police during a pre-season training session, with Robert, Jean-Jacques Adelie and Jean-Pierre Bernays all being arrested for their involvement. As more evidence came to light, the French Football Federation removed Marseille's league title and UEFA prevented Marseille from competing in the Champions League, Super Cup and Intercontinental Cup following their win. Despite this, Marseille were still allowed to retain their Champions League title. In the fallout of the investigation, Tapi and Bernays were banned from football for life by the French Football Federation and the players involved were banned from French football for a year, although Bernays' ban was later overturned by FIFA. Due to the bribery scandal and ensuing financial difficulties, Marseille were forcibly relegated to Ligue 2 for the 94-95 season, and after filing for bankruptcy were forced to spend another year in Ligue 2. Despite the ongoing investigation and the immediate consequences of the scandal, the case itself did not go to trial until March 1995. The trial saw each of the conspirators point the finger at Tapi as the instigator. Bernays even claimed that the club used bribery for matches five to six times a season, not just this once. Ultimately, Tapi was sentenced to over two years in jail and a 20,000 franc fine, although he only served six months before a conditional release. For their parts in the scandal, Bernays, Adelie, Robert and Burrachaga were all given prison sentences. Adelie was given a one-year sentence, while Robert and Burrachaga were given six months suspended sentences, and Bernays was given a two-year suspended sentence and a fine. For his part in the entire ordeal, Glassman received the 1995 FIFA Fair Play Award. Given the evidence provided against Marseille and Tapi, and Bernays' claim of multiple other instances of bribery, it's not hard to view Marseille's Champions League win as being tainted. In a 2011 interview, former Rangers footballer Mark Haightley claims he was offered money to miss the Champions League match between the two sides. Although Haightley ended up missing the match through suspension, Rangers failed to qualify from the group by one goal following a one-all draw with Marseille on the penultimate match day. UEFA decided not to investigate these claims, citing Marseille's exclusion from the 93-94 Champions League season as being punishment enough. Further allegations surfaced in Adelie's 2006 autobiography, where he alleges that himself and his teammates were injected with unknown substances ahead of the final against Milan. More than a decade after the final, there was little UEFA could do other than check the anti-doping test which had been conducted following the match, which UEFA announced had been negative at the time. The scandal, and the financial issues which arose from it, was one which rocked the club at the peak of its powers, causing years of decline. A second place finish in 1999, three seasons after their return to the top flight, as well as in 2007 and 2009, would be their closest attempt on the title until the victory in the 0910 season, a feat which they have failed to match ever since. European success has been even more elusive, having been runners-up in the UEFA Cup three times since their return to the top flight. While the history books will always show you the league titles and the Champions League that is side one, the bribery scandal will forever taint Bernard Tapie's ownership of the club and cast a dark shadow over the biggest achievement of a French club.